I was recently sent a picture by a chap called Alex and his neighbours had said they had a sort of smell of burning plastic in the house and there was a discoloured lamp. And he went in and took a look at it and uh, this is what he found. It was this lamp, it's all discoloured inside. And to be honest, I immediately thought that, particularly with the discoloration at the holder up here and the sort of dripping effect, I thought that looks like water ingress through the ceiling into the lamp holder. And... He went back and uh, took a look. He took the ceiling rose off and said there was nothing really obvious inside it. So uh, let's take a look inside the lamp and see what we can find. It just almost seems like it's filled up with liquid and then dried out. So squeaky lamp. The inside of the lamp uh, is either it's something's uh, maybe an electrolytic capacitor has leaked and it's deposited uh, just vapour over everything in the inside, but it really is up to the top and actually around the actual surface here. This looks as though it's been submerged because it is corroded, or that could have been liquid dripping down, sort of forming a sort of path between the two connections. Um, let's uh, open this up. That's the best bit, isn't it? So I'm going to cut these wires off and presumably I can get in the back of this. This is one of these ones that if you try unscrewing it, it doesn't come out. But if you screw it in, it does come out. So what we could find in here is possibly... Well, that does look a bit gooey inside. Very gooey and gelatinous, but there's nothing really... That's odd. Uh, shall we get in a bit closer? So let's unwrap this. There is sort of goo on the outside of this, but it's not the normal stuff I'd expect. It may be that the electrolytic capacitor has just gone very, very messy in here. The electrolytic capacitor is not domed. Um, there's no sign of residue out the back. The circuit board is showing signs that moisture has been possibly on it, unless that's just flux. But it looks clean. There's stuff in here that looks like sort of silicon. But where would that have come from? The inside of this looks relatively clean. Oh, you know what the silicon is? That's where they glued it shut. There were traces in this. I originally tried getting this off and it wouldn't come off and that's when I discovered it was the reverse thread. Um, I have to say that everything about this so far looks as though water has come through the ceiling. I'm not seeing any obvious source. There's the silicon inside. It's, they've, it's obviously dripped down while they've been gooing the thing shut. I think it missed most of this because this didn't feel that uh, tricky. Um, I would reckon that if I was to solder this back onto this, it would probably work. One moment, please. Well, that's a couple of wires soldered on. I didn't use the original pads because there was so much corrosion. In fact, one of the... LED leads is corroded completely off, suggesting that that has been submerged under liquid. So um, I'm going to plug it in and let's share the moment. Will it go bang? Will it bang? No, it lit. Okay. So everything about this is saying to me that this thing has been full of water. And uh, I was thinking of something that happened to me a while back. I arrived back at my flat in Glasgow from working away for a long period of time and my flat in Glasgow is in the top of a hill. It's very, it's very prone to stormy weather. And the, because, well, it's not the exact top of the hill because there's another flat that's higher, a tenement. And because of that, it's, when the rain blows in the right direction, it hits its gable wall, it runs down the gable wall. Excuse all the ink in the fingers. I've been uh, giving my printer a good clean. Um, and I came home one day from working away from a long, for a long time and as I walked across the lounge I heard a sort of squeaky noise. You know when you walk across grass and it makes a sort of squeaking noise? And I reached down to felt the carpet and it was wet. And I looked up and there was water dripping out the light fitting and I thought, oh no, like there must be a leak in the roof. And I went up into the attic 
And I went to exactly where the cables went through and the, it was completely bone dry. The plasterboard was just completely dry. And I thought, well, where's the water coming from then? Is this even the right fitting? I was, initially I thought I'd somehow managed to get mixed up with it because, you know, it's not so easy to see which room's where. Um, and I double checked and nope, the cables, there were the two, there was the live going down, the, the feed cable and then looping back out and there's a the switch cable, bone dry everything. And I think, where's this water coming from? I put my finger down in between the wires and it came out with the tip wet. And uh, not the live wires, I should say. I wasn't poking it right down into the blooming, uh, the ceiling rose. And I'm thinking, well, where's water coming in? And I looked over at the wall, the gable wall, and water I had managed to get under with the force of the wind and the rain and the amount that's coming down, it had actually sprayed underneath the roof and come, come down the inside wall. And from there, it had gone onto the plasterboard, and because it's double layer plasterboard with the sort of layer, in, uh, with the sort of surface in between, and then our text underneath, which kind of made it waterproof, the water travelled in between the two layers of plasterboard, and then coming down through the ceiling rows. Um, and uh, that, I wonder if. I wonder if there's a bathroom above this one, or if someone spilt a lot of liquid in some way. Something has happened that water has somehow gone into this. It's the only explanation I can give for the fact that this has clearly been full to the brim and that it's caused the corrosion with the DC. This this thing's kept running because it looks as though it's largely missed this. Um, if it had hit it, it might have caused it to flash over and fail. But um, that's not happened. Uh, for those of you wondering, someone will mention, why did you touch the capacitor when it had been on? Uh, if the circuitry is working, it will discharge that capacitor down to quite a low level quite quickly. So, um, yes, I would suggest to Alex that he uh, check that out because it does look like uh, this has had water from above. Maybe the neighbours are not telling the full story here. But, uh, interesting to see inside and interesting that it survived and actually quite a nice little lamp. The fact it uses standard uh, 1 watt LEDs, five of them to make up the 5 watt rating and a typical driver based on, well it would be, I, I really should actually check out what this chip is. Is it a bright power chip? Yes it is. BP3102. Let's see if I can even focus on that. Are you going to be able to see that? Uh, I'd have to zoom up and down a bit. Mm, probably. So it is a standard bright power chip, full bridge rectifier, capacitor, and yeah, so little circuitry because it is that classic power supply. And quite a nice lamp as well, just uh, slightly waterlogged. Um, he sent me uh, its partner lamp because they weren't, they weren't comfortable pushing this other one in if the other one had seemed to fail. But uh, to be honest, it, I don't think it has failed uh, in the sense that, you know, it's been water ingress. Uh, and this one is actually quite a smart lamp. It's quite a nice little layout. Very simple. It just basically, this connection goes up here. Different colour wires. Uh, it runs through the LEDs in series and then back up again. And the same arrangement that this is uh, screwed in with the driver in the back just wrapped in Captain tape. Interesting. Interesting stuff indeed.